Do you consider yourself intellectual? Am I? Are you watching this video because you think I might be an intellectual? You see so many questions and answers might be complicated because they might involve some game theory. For example, only intellectuals would definitely answer no to that question and people who are full of themselves or they try to fool somebody else would say yes. You see where I'm going with this? The word intellectual is having its biggest identity crisis in centuries and it seems there is no one to blame. I often wonder while I travel to amazing places to shoot episodes of this show is what is the common ground for all those great, often troubled individuals that I had the opportunity to get to know a little bit better. You know, to take one step closer. Ernest Hemingway, Einstein, Virginia Woolf. What is their behavior, intellect, approach to life that made them so different and unique, yet so down to earth and relatable? As you're watching this, I'm probably in Italy working on the documentary about Leonardo da Vinci to test my wild hypothesis about the possibility of existence of a modern renaissance man going down the rabbit holes of history that are full of surprises. Dense pages of history books are witnessing the palette of extraordinary individuals that transform humanity, help us understand who we are and where are we headed. I cannot help but wonder where did they suddenly disappear? Who are the heroes of our current existence? Those are questions that are really complicated and then I'm afraid I don't have answers for. Uh, we are surrounded with people that they seem they know everything about every topic because the amount of information that is available to them also treaded with some uh, white noise or misinformation is huge and it's sitting in our pockets. It seems like everybody's expert on anything. Just turn around uh, yourself and ask people about any topic and they will give you a clear answer. It seems that human existence is now synonymous with the amount of data available to us. We are all aware of the entrapment that modern society can bring. Fueled by algorithms, popular culture is trying to establish a new breed of heroes that cannot be. They regularly own the media that try to establish them as heroes and have immense monetary power to buy them reputation, accolades and charisma. But most of us cannot be fooled. Thanks to the informational speed we are all part of, we are witnessing something very confusing. Some truly successful people embarrassing themselves in attempts to have an opinion in fields that are not educated for or even going off the rails completely. For example, successful actors are giving medical advice or Nobel Prize laureates sharing their opinions about the race. And this is exactly what celebrated American writer and philosopher Tom Wolfe warned us about when he took the stage at Boston University in 2000 to give an address that is now part of some textbooks. We must be careful to make a distinction between an intellectual and person of intellectual achievement. The two are very, very different animals. There are people of intellectual achievement who increase the sum of human knowledge, the powers of human insight and analysis. And then there are intellectuals. An intellectual is a person knowledgeable in one field who speaks out only in others. Starting in the 20th century, for the first time an ordinary storyteller, a novelist, a short story writer, a poet, a playwright, in certain cases a composer, an artist or even opera singer could achieve a tremendous eminence by becoming morally indignant about some public issue. It required no intellectual effort whatsoever. Suddenly, he was elevated to the plane from which he could look down upon ordinary people. Conversely, this fascinates me. Conversely, if you are merely a brilliant scholar, merely someone who has added immersively to the sum of human knowledge and the powers of human insight, that does not qualify you for the eminence of being an intellectual. Hollywood is to blame for our romantic and completely delusional vision of an intellectual, often quirky and without any social skills, introverts with tics who would spend days and nights isolated in a library according to fast-paced montages which are necessary to make us believe in their internal struggle. But I think we shouldn't really blame movies. I'm a writer after all and I like telling good stories and I understand that overexposing something or isolating some event from the history and telling it with a little bit of spice can create amazing art and narrative that we can all enjoy. 
but in real life intellect is much uh, something different. Uh, to paint that picture I'm going to tell you one much less romantic story. It is the year 1905 and below average physics student left his university. He failed to complete his PhD thesis and neglecting to show proper respect to his professor made him lose even position of a lab assistant. With the help of his father, by all modern standards, this 20-year-old loser took a clerk's job in the office for patents in Bern, Switzerland. His scientific passion has been relegated to his spare time, to the long idle hours in the office and to chats with his colleague and a friend. Not losing his optimism and scribbling physics hypothesis in his spare time, it came as a shock when one year later he published not one, not two, not three, but four seminal papers that would forever change the course of humanity. A legend says that the magnificent city clock that was on everyday walking path of Albert Einstein was inspiration that put him on a path of discovering his general theory of relativity. For some of those similarly brilliant and hard-working people, history ensured that their contribution will never be forgotten, but we will never know how many more were out there. We can only be certain that new great individuals are not on the big stages in front of the flashing lights, but rather somewhere among us, quietly knitting the threads of next magnum opus that might redefine our future. Being in an intellectual means finding humor and laughter even in the darkest places of humanity. Being goofy, cheeky and self-aware to the joking firstly about ourselves gives us opportunity to get really close to the ground, make ourselves roll back to infantile stages, or even further, makes us closer to animals. And then, maybe for a second, that could give us feeling that we as humans are not here by chance, dropped from the universe, to conquer and destroy what is not ours, but maybe through our laughter we can ground ourselves on this immensely rich and fruitful stone that is traveling through universe and believe that we might, after all, belong here. It's not a secret that the most heavily depressed intellectuals through centuries were actually extremely charming and humorous individuals and often life of the party. Ernest Hemingway was the one who would entertain the whole bar in Havana for weeks, but he also said, happiness in intelligent people is the rarest thing I know. His life was interwoven with sadness and self-loathing, but his masterful work was the pinnacle of observation of very common things. After exhausting journey and traveling through time and space to pick up the brains of some of the greatest people who ever lived, I am more convinced that true intellectual life is hiding in doing common deeds and finding kindness, love and laughter in everyday places. It's not about academic success, money or recognition. It's about trying to become more human every day. Hey, Vladislav Radek again here. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. Every week I'm taking you on new adventures. If you saw this amazing footage uh, from this episode from Italy that was actually uh, made for one special episode that was aired on this channel and I will put the link down below. It's about composer who united Italy. See you next week. Until then, stay tuned and curious. And don't forget, libraries still exist.